we have $25 from Inferno Blitz, who says, shout out to the Yeti and the artist for another round of awesome merch. Put this towards the one true villain, Culex. Thank you very much, Inferno Blitz. And I think we are just about ready for Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze with Spike Vegeta, Michael Goldfish, and Cruncher, Boys. and also the real Funky Kong. <laughs> Through is the way to go. You know we're live, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we live? They can hear us now? <laughs> I see Goldfish turning to look at me and like talk, and I was like, do you not hear him throwing it to you right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's up, everyone? Are we enjoying AGDQ 2019? Give it to me! <laughs> Woo. I didn't say scream. <laughs> Very. Well, this is Donkey Kong Country yeah. Tropical Freeze. Uh, this is the Nintendo Switch version. Uh, we'll be playing uh, on funky mode. Uh, to go ahead and, like, while we're getting this queued up, do you want to explain exactly what this category is, Hobbs? Any percent no death abuse <laughs> funky mode? Yeah, so uh, with the Switch release of the game, they actually released a new mode, funky mode, which gave you some additional hearts and a new character, which we'll be talking about a lot as soon as we get into it. Uh, but it also introduced a mechanic that we uh, that is useful for any percent, but not for the category they're going to be playing, which is that when you die a certain number of times in a level, the game will give you the option to skip that level and go to the, the next one. And uh, because of that, you can actually skip some really longer levels if you do that, but it's a little less interesting because you tend to just roll off a ledge eight times in a row or something. Mm -hmm. So this is the no death abuse category. They can use Funky Kong. They can use the original Kongs, and we'll get into that too, but there is no uh, death abusing. They will die unintentionally, and then we'll laugh. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> All right. Well, are we ready, gentlemen? Yep. All right, I guess we're going to all sort of the runners. I'm Spike Vegeta. I'm Michael Goldfish. I'm Cruncha. I am Woo. Great <laughs> And uh, let's do this. All right. Uh, three, two, one, go. All right. So the run starts actually at uh, where it did right there on, one, on the world map, rather, because the, it just skips a long intro cutscene. So they want to get rid of that, and there's nothing else that really happens. So... They're both going to smash through, or they're all going to mash through this, and uh, now you have Funky Kong. So if you saw the last time this was shown at AGQ or you played it on Wii U, Funky Kong is a new character introduced that you can infinitely roll with as if you had a partner Kong um, from the original version of the game. Also, he has a double jump, and turns out double jumps are pretty good for speedrunning unless you're Spike Vegeta, who oh. just fell, and is now trying to get back up using a technique called a there grab it jump. Is. Yeah, there we go. So we got the uh, early lead being taken by Michael Goldfish here. Uh, Spike is not too far behind. In, it's in pretty third. far behind. Crunch the race is over. <laughs> Crunch is right in the middle there, just barely behind uh, Goldfish. But uh, yeah, so Funky can run in, uh, roll infinitely, which will allow him to roll through enemies, not through every type of enemy, but through a lot of them. Uh, he also has a double jump, which will preserve your momentum. And that's very important because, I mean, you've watched speedruns by this point. You know when we say the word momentum and preserve, it generally means pretty good things. In 1-1, one, one, it's really just all about getting to the end as quickly as possible. There's nothing too special about it except that one jump that Spike missed up. And, uh, <laughs> and other than that, they're really just going to be rolling through here and bouncing off enemies uh, instead of starting up rolls whenever they can. Because every time you start up a roll, you it costs just a little bit of time. It's like a quarter of a second, probably even less than that. And uh, thus, when you bounce off enemies to preserve your momentum, you actually save that roll startup animation. So they're going to be doing that throughout the entire run. Uh, you slap this gong, not the ground, but the gong, three times in order to change the environment, and that'll get you to the end barrel here. All right, not too bad, not too bad. Hey, congrats on finishing, man. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I think that was like, a problem with my controller, so if you both could just, like, jump in a pit real quick. <laughs> We're in this together. Oh, man. All right, so we're into one, two. Uh, one of the other things that rolling can do for you is you can roll on water, uh, which is very useful in both this level. You immediately saw Goldfish do it just for a moment there. But also, uh, one of the things that Spike showed off in 1-1, one, one, because he fell, <laughs> is that you can do a uh, grab jump with Funky Kong in order to get extra height. So basically, whenever they're doing a double jump and it looks like they got a lot of height out of it, see if you can tell that Funky kind of grabbed his arms out, because when that happens, uh, they're getting just a little bit of extra height, and they can use it to make some jumps safer and also to make some jumps that weren't possible before. Now you're seeing some swimming uh, on from Goldfish and Cruncher here. Swimming is... Hey, I'm swimming too, okay, dude. Now you are, not when I started. I'm totally <laughs> in the water. 
Uh, swimming is basically just like with rolling, you can corkscrew infinitely with Funky Kong. Uh, it's Funky is not the fastest at swimming, so he won't be the character that we use for swimming the entire run, uh, but he's not too bad because he can corkscrew infinitely. You know, me and Crunch got that, by the way. Wait, he got it? <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. Crunch actually got it? I actually got it. You were 0 for a million in practice. <laughs> Always the tone of surprise today. <laughs> that jump in a pit. Hey, there are pits in this level. You drop in a pit, uh, you die, and you go back to a checkpoint. What's the pig's yeah, name again? Uh, do you want to show them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think as a gentleman that you are, Mr. Funky Kong, you should jump in the pit. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, if you haven't noticed, we've got a uh, cosplay going on right here. We've got Funky Kong himself. Yeah, there we go. Give it up. Shorts and all. This is a cosplay? Yeah. That's, that's what cosplaying is. I thought this was how you wore your clothes just every day. <laughs> yeah, I wore this to bed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right, in 1-3 here, you can see that they already had a very fast climb. Spike's in it now. Basically, optimizing climbs in 2D platformers are always super cool because a lot of the time, you're just trying to do jump as high as possible. But when you're specifically doing a vertical climb, you want to make sure you land on the platform as soon as possible, the next highest platform. So you don't always want to jump too high. Now that you see some spikes are showing up, uh, with Funky, because he has a surfboard, he actually doesn't take damage from spikes. Again, this is kind of like your easy mode a little bit that they added in the Nintendo Switch version. But you still don't want to fall in spikes because getting out of them is the worst thing ever. You move so slowly, you have to hop along. It's like you're walking in hummus. And so if we ever say, I'm in the hummus, that, that's what's happening. <laughs> The hummus glue, specifically. Right, yes. Glue made out of hummus. <laughs> Which right, is sort of delicious. I mean, hummus is delicious. I forgot how much can shorter I get, the Can I get are. some uh, some claps for hummus? <laughs> Yo, shout out to chickpeas. <laughs> <laughs> is that a type of hummus? Am I not oh, it? no. <laughs> <laughs> we can have this conversation now. We're going into an auto-scroller. <laughs> I mean, we can let them read donations. Or we yeah, can talk about hummus. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Wait, we got to go for the barrel skip first, right? Oh, sure. Very quickly, look on uh, Goldfish's screen here in the top right. And he skips the barrel. That barely saves time, but we clap anyways. <laughs> Crunch got it as well. Let's see about Spike. Uh-oh. Hey! Yeah! Now you can read some donations. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have $20 from Captain Tugmok, who says, Greetings from Moscow. If I were back in the States, I'd be watching this live right now, but I'll start off with a YouTube replay. Much love to Punch for keeping this comment in reserve for the extra hour. I got you. Don't worry. Thanks for bringing my favorite platformer of all time to this wonderful event. Thank you very much. To jump in real quick, they're going to be trying to jump up hills and take some speed when they go down a hill and then jump. Uh, that's about it when it comes to these. Otherwise, it's, 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 a, just it's jump pretty a lot. weird, honestly, to analyze yeah. what is the best thing to do in these auto scrollers, the mine carts in particular. You just kind of watch the IL world record and you just do all that. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't really make sense, but it's one of those things that doesn't matter too much RTA. It's more for ILs. But with that, you can do some more donations, Bungie. Okay, certainly. We have $200 from Batitude. He said, people haven't been this invested in competitively launching monkeys at high speed since the space race. Keep it up, dudes. <laughs> Love that ape. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have $10 from Gummy Bunnies, who says, my first time tabbing into a GDQ event live. Cheers to all the runs and the wonderful community that's doing good with the charity donations. Probably sneaking one more. It's a long auto scroller. I got $10 from Subasa Akari, who says, Yo, good luck to all the runners in the Tropical Freeze race. Spike, I've got $100 if you win the race. Roll in deep. You're good. You got it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He's not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should just donate that anyways. I'm not saying I don't have confidence in myself. Jump in a pit. <laughs> Ooh, who's going to jump in a pit? Who what? Okay. Who what? Did you swap? <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Boston, by the way. All right, well, <laughs> at, now that we're out of 1-4, uh, we have something important to talk about, which is the fact that they can switch between Funky Kong and the original Kong members. That is Donkey Kong, Dixie Kong, Diddy Kong, and Cranky Kong. And uh, they're going to be doing that immediately for this boss. As you can see on Goldfish's screen in the top right, he is already Donkey and Cranky. And the reason that they're doing this is because of Cranky's cane, uh, cane uh, which allows him to get very high. And also, on the Switch version exclusively, they can hit Pompey at some very odd times. 
So you can see there are some setups here being used to try to hit this cod at the very top of the screen. We call that the God Cod. It went pretty well for our for Goldfish there. Crunch is coming up next. Goldfish is uh, showing off some swag bounces while the boss is invulnerable. Unfortunately, uh, oh, I was looking at Spike's screen. My bad. <laughs> Why would you do that? I'm not sure. Wait, did I do good? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> all right. Hey, look! I did that. That was all me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, yeah, so the main thing with Pompey is that you can't, like, even though you can bounce up like Goldfish is doing right now, you can't damage him in between phases, but you can try to damage him as soon as his phase begins. And uh, that is a lot tighter timing than it looks. First, just getting the pogo off the right spot on the right side is very tough. And then on top of that, you have to dodge the shield enemy so he doesn't bounce you away. Now, if you look at Crunch's screen here, he's got a... Uh, He's got a large fish here, rather large one. He's going to try to hit this second one way up at the top of the screen in order to dismiss it much sooner. Did a pretty good job of it, and then immediately hit Pompey again, so that was pretty good. Spike, unfortunately, I think missed one of the hits there, and uh, now he should be able to get this next one. Yeah, didn't have to wait too long on that. Sometimes you have to wait for Pompey to move all the way across the half pipe, and it's, it's no good. All right, they're all out of World 1, so they're going to be heading into World 2. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good clap. Those are pretty good Pompeys overall. So now they're switching back to Funky Kong because, I mean, the cosplay. You know. <laughs> and that's the only reason why. That's not the last you're going to see of the DK family throughout this run. Uh, they'll get a much lengthier appearance later. But most of this we actually run as Funky Kong. Uh, if you actually, like, break down, there's 41 levels in any percent. And uh, it's actually kind of an even split, I would say, with, like, when they're faster or whatnot. But it's just faster to not go through all the menus to swap in Kong so it's a half second time save for three seconds of menus. All right, All, everybody's into two one now, which honestly I think is just, it's one of my favorite levels. Cruncher does a neat strat where he takes the tops of these windmills here. That's because these windmills are all moving counterclockwise, uh, or well, sorry, some of them are moving counterclockwise, some of them are moving clockwise. And you basically want to try to catch the platforms on the windmills whenever they're moving to the right. So that way they kind of pull you a little bit further to the right. Now, if you look at Goldfish's screen, top right, he's doing an optimized climb here, and he's going to miss it and fall down. I have to try to bounce back up to this trampoline. So he's going to miss the cycle there. It's going to open up some time for uh, Cruncher and Spike. Cruncher's is our next one to, to take a shot at it in the bottom. Oh, not quite going to make it either. He does use the hover from Funky to save himself twice from falling all the way down, but that's unfortunate. That's gonna give Spike the chance to really catch up here. Now, both of them just jump right off the cart at the beginning here. Because of the double jump from Funky, you can actually just completely skip the cart. Very nice. Now, I didn't catch if Goldfish got the roll into the barrel or not, but as the other two are heading into this barrel, let's see if they try to roll into it, which is very tight timing. Cruncher just barely bonked the wall, and yeah. same with Spike. A nice bonk by, by the way. <laughs> I went too slow, or I was too fast. I don't remember. I don't know where I am. All right, and that's uh, going to do it for 2-1. Goldfish is going to be the first one heading into 2-2. Two, two. And this is our first Rambi level, which means it sucks. Boo. <laughs> yeah, Ram Yeah, uh, Hobbs got into a little bit how every time you start up a roll with Funky, you're losing, like, a frame. Um, it's the same deal with Rambi, only much worse. It's something closer, we don't know the exact amount of frames, but like more like a tenth of a second. So you want to see us chain bounces off of enemies and other objects as much as we can. I know you're actually going to see over on Crunch's screen, he's actually going to like to do a lot of the level without Rambi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, already in this first section, he's just completely skipping by him. There are some blocks and, uh, and other things that only Rambi can break. But they uh, Crunch has found ways, basically, to lab it out and not need Ram before those sections. Just find ways on top of the on top of the walls. Wait here. Yeah, you can get some momentum. Uh, Spike got some of it there with uh, Ram I guess, yeah, actually, that's how much you want to get with Ram <laughs> You can't get much of yeah. them, unfortunately, with uh, Funky compared to like Cranky and older runs. Yeah, old runs could actually carry a lot of momentum with uh, with Ram because you could continuously bounce with your cane while preserving your momentum uh, while on Rambi. But with Funky, you can still double jump with him because, man, he's got some arms on him and he can really lift that Rhino. But you can't do that more than once without hitting the ground. So you have to have something to bounce off of, and there's not always something there. So far, pretty nice 2-2s two all around. 
goldfish still in the lead here. Oh, we didn't really explain, uh, by the way, that we have a little bit of a, a running joke that's gonna tr we're going to try to keep up with during this, which is I'm going to shift my position based on who's in the lead of the race. Um, I'm probably going to stay here. That's <laughs> what we're going for. I mean, yeah. Make him <laughs> eat those words, goldfish. <laughs> this isn't up to me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's good two twos all around. Two three, uh, Goldfish is gonna be coming in two first. This is the first of three global cycle levels. Um, what that basically means is that in most of these levels, as the camera moves along the level with you, as you're moving through the level, all of your enemies, all of your platforms that are moving, all of that is is uh, has its cycles based on where you are in the level. However, when in this level, it's actually based on the music. So a lot of these leaves, the enemies that are bobbing up and down, the horns that are that are playing, that's all based on the music. And so if they make any mistakes anywhere, the platforms and the enemies are going to be in different positions. Even if it's only slightly, that can really affect your movement through the level. So you have to be very careful first to just try not to make mistakes like you're always careful about. But if you do, to try to properly adjust so you don't fall into a pit because an, a uh, platform is higher than it normally is. So far, it's been pretty clean for, for everybody, as far as I could tell. And for the most part, it's just kind of get through the level as best you can. It, it doesn't, you don't specifically have to bounce off the same enemy that everybody else bounces off of. Yeah, it's kind of one thing that's nice about Tropical Free Speedrunning, I find. I know my friend Ghoul, who also runs this, talks about it. You kind of get this nice sense of creativity and your own personality in the in the movement that you saw, like we saw Crunch in the last level. He didn't even use Rambi. And he says to himself, it's not really faster. Uh, it's just a different type of route you can take. As long as you're moving to the right. <coughs> None of us did it during yours. <laughs> <laughs> so the purpose of that is that they were listening for an audio cue. <laughs> and so they were uh, trying to mask the audio cue for each other. But for some reason, we didn't do it for Goldfish. <laughs> I was talking like an idiot. <laughs> Collusion. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Goldfish is in a 2-4. And, uh, you know, just this game really loves putting auto-scrollers on the number four. And uh, so this is our is Sawmill Thrill our second minecart auto-scroller. And Punchy, I think you know what that means. I think I do. We have $250 from Dr. Disc, who says, this is a weird version of Diddy Kong Racing. I don't love the minecarts car. Dude, what a great game. <laughs> can we play that now? <laughs> We've done enough of this. We I get mean, the point. You probably can. <laughs> All right, I'm fine with that. <laughs> is it on the virtual console? We have $10 from VGBM, who says, he has no style. He has no grace. Spike Vegeta might lose this race. Oh, <laughs> oh. got him. <laughs> Gonna need a hug. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> Wait, what? We have $25 from Luko, who says, break a leg, Cruncher. Much love from the Santa Cruz kitchen table. Dude, can someone donate just the entire DK rap? I'd be OK with that. <laughs> Oh, wow. Punchy, I want to hear your rendition you of that. Um, <laughs> moving swiftly on, we have $15 from Jusby, who says, so happy to donate to a great cause. Also, shout out to my boy Keeper behind the couch. No, but seriously, Punchy, like, if you have, like, any in there that's the DK rap. <laughs> it's funny how we have this policy. If you send the DK rap, Punchy <laughs> has to read it. This is not what Rap God was supposed to mean. <laughs> and we have $500 from Steve-O the Human. Woo! He says, DK family, but where is the DK crew, huh? We have $100 from Ketchup, who says, go, goldfish, booyah, booyah, booyah. All right, I think I noticed goldfish lose about two frames total in this level, so it looks like the lead is slipping. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really anybody's game at this point. Did we gain those two frames? Oh, no, you lost way more than that. Oh, OK. Not even jumping on the final platforms. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the granny hill. <laughs> we do not jump up that last hill you guys saw back there, because it actually makes those little, the three tiny platforms that you're jumping on actually a lot tighter. So it becomes like close to, we're, we'll say frame perfect. It's probably sub frame I've never perfect. done it. <laughs> yeah, this guy's in the lead, and he didn't do it. All right, into 2-5 we go. 
Uh, 2 5 is kind of, uh, it, you know, it's kind of a neat level. You, it used to be a Dixie level in the original version of the game, but now with Funky, he could do these grab jumps so he can just skip over vines completely and really uh, do these really big jumps. There's also a lot of kind of rolling off of platforms pretty far because you can jump out of your roll at any time with Funky Kong, uh, as opposed to like if you were solo DK where you only have a limited amount of time. And there's the first death of the run, unfortunately, on Spike's side. Boo. <laughs> Goldfish is uh, probably going to be jumping in this barrel pretty early with a grab jump there. Once again, grab jumps do just give you a little bit of extra height. And then actually that first bounce on the flower will be, take a look at Crunch's screen because he's going to do a neat try to get up into this barrel quickly. And then the flower bounce after this, your first bounce on a flower if you roll into it and time your bounce right is actually going to preserve your momentum as opposed to most times when you're bouncing on uh, bouncy platforms specifically, like these uh, hot air balloons, they will actually slow down your momentum. The rest of the level though is basically just don't get hit and don't stop holding right. And, uh, and you should be pretty good. Spike now going for the super bounce, and there it is. Everybody nailing that one, so that's good. Oh, getting hit there just a little bit, but not too bad. Every time you do get hit because you're, uh, because Funky kind of just freezes in place for a quarter second or a half second or so, uh, it does lose you a little bit of time. There are exceptions to that rule, but that was not one of them. <laughs> that wasn't either. <laughs> this section sucks, dude. <laughs> This is somehow like one of my 10 toughest levels in the, le getting the whole run for me. You're just bouncing on balloons. Like he tried to make it sound technical. That was just me being bad. All right, we've got Goldfish in 2-6. He's already picked up, I believe, uh, like eight bananas. Oh man, there's so many now. Ooh, look at them all. So this is uh, this is very wrong. You, you actually get penalized at the end of the run based on how many bananas you picked up during it. So he's really probably not even in the lead anymore. But uh, I mean, who am I kidding? Yes, he is. He's still in the lead. <laughs> Hobbs. Tried to find out something new because this is a glorified auto scroller, as you can probably tell. <laughs> Hobbs in his free time when learning this game try <laughs> spent more time on this level than like actual hard levels because he wanted to see the minimum amount of bananas you could get when riding on these things. It's like four. It's great. Let's see if Spike will go for uh, some of the dodges. <laughs> Just like, I'll do the ride off right there. You said you can only get like four. I I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. There's, you can dodge a lot of them. You just got to be creative. Like how do you, you, how dodge, do you dodge? You can that? dodge all those, but like one. Yeah, you can without taking damage too. Someone, get, goldfish, give him your controller. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just getting all of these. We're not saying anything useful, Punchy. You can go ahead and read. I'm not saying please God. We have five dollars from Jake R, who simply commented the entire DK rap. <laughs> Wait, how's that go again? I think I need a reminder. Yeah, I need yeah. <laughs> I don't actually know. Fifteen dollars from Raw Muffin, who says this commentary is on point. I am dying over jokes about hummus. Donation goes to J Hope's choice. Oh, cool. Uh, next unmet DK, DK rap. Race. He wants it to go to the DK <laughs> That's rap. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. <laughs> okay, there is a kind of cool thing actually coming up here that we missed for uh, Goldfish and Cruncher, but Spike. Don't worry. The, I'm, yeah, I'm the about instant to say, replay here. Replay. So first of all, he's dodging some bananas. Good job. And uh, now you get a little bit of momentum from this swing, and you can actually roll on the ground and do a double jump to keep it all the way into that barrel. Super cool. And then this climb is actually pretty neat, too. Oh, OK. That was a little scary for a moment. But uh, once again, optimizing climbs is a lot about jumping as little as possible as opposed to jumping you know, as high as possible. And it went OK there. But in general, they can look pretty sexy. All right, we're into Scowl here. And Spike, this is a big uh, favorite of yours, I know. Yeah, Scowl is a Sephiroth, but an owl. Um, so yeah, the big thing here is that this guy is incredibly punishing. You can lose like 30 seconds for missing any of these eggs in the first phase, 15 in the second phase, and 45 in the third. So major, major time losses, potentially. Uh, he's only going to give you a handful of eggs each phase. So you want to make sure you do the best with each of those that you can. And if you haven't noticed it, you actually have to bounce on the egg once first to get it to stop moving, and then you can pick it up. So it's very important that you don't accidentally like miss it because it might just go off the edge of the screen. Goldfish is now holding on to this first egg in the second phase, so that way a third egg spawns. And he grabs the second egg right before it just basically pick, uh, comes back up again. It's a good uh, first and second phase for Goldfish. Good second phase so far from Cruncha. There it is. 
And now into third phase for those two. Spikes into the second phase. So only one phase behind right now. Not too bad. Now, there used to be RNG in these, in pretty much every boss. Uh, well, not every boss, but in a lot of the bosses. And actually, when they came out with the Switch version, they got rid of all the RNG. Nintendo did it, guys. They, they did it. I'm going to give Nintendo the credit. <laughs> not, not the people who made the game. I'm going to give Nintendo the credit. <laughs> But yeah, so they actually got rid of all of the RNG uh, in the boss fights, and they made it the fastest RNG um, that was possible because they were able to look at the IL times and know which was the fastest. Because of that, they don't have to worry about like knowing where these eggs are going to drop in the third phase or anything like that. Now, Goldfish actually bounces on Scowl there with Funky so that he's able to slap him with the last egg and then with his hand as he's moving out of world two crunch is looking pretty good too finishes off the boss spike not too far behind you get him buddy thanks buddy now bouncing off of I think I'll lose the egg. <laughs> bouncing off of the eggs is a little tougher than it looks because if you press the jump button too early then you'll do a double jump and you won't hit the egg uh, and actually make it collectible, like make it so that you can pick it up. So it's actually pretty tight timing. Uh, it takes some practice. And there we go. Everybody's out of world two. <clears throat> All right, going into 3-1 here. This is uh, Munch Koopa's favorite level <laughs> because the music is fantastic. And uh, also, this is the second global cycle level. Basically, any, any level that has, like, really interesting music tends to have <laughs> global cycles to it. But this one, like, the, the cycles are actually aren't quite as big of a deal, at least not in this first section, because there's going to be a much longer cycle that they can't catch anyways. So even if you mess up a little bit in this first section of the, uh, of the level, you're going to still make that cycle in the second section. Yeah, the big cycle you're looking for, if you look at Michael Goldfish's screen right piece. now, are these uh, puppets you see in the background they're going to be climbing on. He wants to catch the last one, which will save him seven seconds over losing it. So as long as you make that, you're good yep. to go. So Goldfish made that first cycle. I believe Crunch is going to as well. And now in this, uh, in kind of the back third of this level is where things get a little more interesting because there's going to be all these snake platforms that you're seeing now on Goldfish's screen in the top right. And they move, and they move pretty far apart. So if you're ever slow, they actually, because of how steep they get, they will force you to slide down them if you don't do your movement properly. And uh, as you're coming up to the end here, they actually need to try to get on the nose of the snake and then uh, try to actually jump off of this last one at the right time to double jump into the barrel. Goldfish oh. didn't get it, so that's going to lose him a little bit of time. And then he oh, he just, like, rode it all the way up after that. Now look at Crunch's screen, because he's actually going to try to get on the tip of the snake with a grab jump. He barely got up there. He slapped the ground, but he's in the barrel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Slap strats for the win. All right. <laughs> Spike's now going to do his best to, he's going to also go for the clinging onto the grass and then double jumping into the barrel method. If he gets this one, he's got bragging rights over goldfish for the rest of the run. This is my moment. Who's going to miss it? <laughs> All right, there's the jump. The double jump, it's in there. Ooh. Good job. Who missed it? Who missed it? <laughs> jump in a pit. <laughs> Ooh, he took a hit. All right. Goldfish now into 3-2. Uh, and this one, the main thing here is they're going to actually try to jump from the right side of this flower and get a double jump up onto the other flower, kind of skipping a little bit of that platforming puzzle there. Now they're able to just kind of smoothly move throughout the rest of this level as much as they can. These Baobabs all spawn consistently, and they can bounce off the Baobabs if they want, but it isn't really going to be too advantageous a lot of the time. The main thing is, once again, whenever they can avoid starting up a new roll, then they will try to do that, uh, because it will just save them a little bit of time. So that's why you do see sometimes bouncing off the Baobabs here and there, like this. And now coming up to the end here, there's just this large one that follows you. And while making it to the end, you got to collect every coin and banana so that way you can spawn the puzzle piece at the end because that is very, very important and not at all useless. Now they're going to try to jump over this puzzle piece as many times as they can before collecting it, before getting to the end of the level. That was a solid three count from Goldfish. Let's see if anyone can match. 
crunch a 1-2. And oh, only going for the 2, I think. Unless, oh, so unless I missed there. But he didn't collect the puzzle piece. I had piece. four. I had four. Oh, you had four. Okay, so I missed two there. Oh. So fine. there we go. But you were doing a lot he there, didn't right? collect the puzzle piece, so I think that invalidates it. That's, that's what I'm going to go with. That disqualifies him from the tournament. We're having a tournament? This is a tournament now. Oh, okay. I don't know if you nice got... Nice one-round tournament. Yeah. All right, Spike got one. He's got two. He's got three. Can he go for four? Is it going to be the fifth one? He'll lose some time, but he did it. <laughs> but he didn't collect the puzzle piece and therefore <sighs> is disqualified from the tournament. What? You were supposed to get it? <laughs> I was not listening to that part of it. Congrats, Goldfish. No thanks. <laughs> All right, now they're into uh, the third level here, which is the Frantic Fields. And if you're not, if you were familiar with this level before, there used to be a very tough trick called the Dosido -do in this level. Uh, it's still in the game, but it's like it's still like very hard, and it doesn't save as much time because in order to do it, you have to be donkey and cranky, and the menuing time to switch both to them and to switch back really makes it not super worth it unless you're 100% consistent at it, which is just like very difficult to do. So our runners have all agreed not to do that one, basically. They wanted to make sure that they kept things even here. I mean, you should have just gone for it, Spike. I'm I actually that. did. Well, you did. <laughs> I, by complete accident in muscle memory, did it. Well, <laughs> with Funky, though. <laughs> yeah, I went really far. Right. Rami being grabbed by Spike here, not, not by anybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be like frame slower. I never learned the non. It's not any harder, it's just different. Goldfish is coming up to the end. Nice little bounce strat off of the tuck there, and there we go. That is the tuck, right? Yeah. Just one with a helmet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pointy tucks. Yeah. Point, pointy tucks, I like that. You know, they're like, they're pointy. All right, so Goldfish maintaining that lead, which is why I'm still sitting in the same position. <laughs> Have not moved, my back hurts. All right. <laughs> and we're going to move on to 3-4. 3-4 is a bit more of a kind of simple level. It's actually a great one if you want to get into speedrunning this game and you've got a switch. Like, this is a great first level to learn the IL for because it's like everything just feels pretty good about it, and there's nothing too complicated, but it still has one fairly difficult trick at the end. So it's got a good mix of, like, you can first learn how to just move through the level pretty solidly, and then you still get to try something kind of hard and, uh, and work towards getting better at it. So, highly recommend learning this one if you've uh, if you've got the game. It's very fun. For the most part, it's just a lot of rolling, a lot of getting hit by fire, and a lot of getting uh, when you know a little getting hit by fire, and a uh, very cool trick at the end. Yeah, goldfish coming up on it first here pretty soon. Gonna try to grab, jump across, and skip over this last rope. Gonna do a consistency strat, jumping into that fireball. There we go. He barely grabs the rope and then grabs the next one right Very before nice. it leaves. That is not That's easy to do. No. Crunch coming up on it as well. Crunch it, grabs the rope. He gets the second one. Uh -oh, He's in the thanks, barrel. guys. That was cool. So I'll show you guys what it looks like regularly when you fail. <laughs> we'll see. Spike's coming up. You used to be able to... Well, you can still skip these fire droplets that uh, Spike's going to be coming up on shortly. But... Like he was saying, there's actually a consistency strat of jumping into them just to make sure that the rope positions aren't in a weird place after it. So he's going to get hit by the fire here. Now roll deep. Big jump with a grab jump and grabs both ropes. He's All in right. the barrel. What makes that tighter than it looks is that you will end up a lot of the times, if you're a little slow with your double off of the second vine, you'll actually just get hit by the flame instead of grabbing it and you'll just fall and die. And that's great because you lose like 20 off of it. So now they're into 3-5, another auto scroller. And this is, uh, they in funky mode, they actually added an extra heart onto your auto, your uh, rocket ship here. And so rocket barrel, they're whatever, you know, they're called things. And, uh, and so it made it even easier and it was already really stupid and easy, which is why you can see them stretching. So, I uh, can't stretch yet. They're going to take a secret exit just mostly to both... Wow. Okay, Get so. in there. <laughs> both, both to cut That's out so uh, some of this level, but also to uh, do less levels overall on the world map. So, Punch, you can go ahead and... Or, uh, yeah, you could read some more donations. Super. We have $11 from N. Yiddle, who says, I'll donate another $50, but only if Spike Vegeta comes in last place. <laughs> Much love. I got you. We I might get you. that one. We got this. <laughs> PCF, you're welcome. <laughs> Jeff Lane donates $5 to say, I've been lagging behind on work and everything else today. So to stick with that theme, naturally, I'm watching Spike screen. 
I'll stop bullying you. Now, I'm giving you. I'm giving you more content here. Bidzy donates fifty dollars and twenty cents to say the five hundred two crew is rooting for you, Spike. We are also glad Arby's is in the house. <laughs> you got someone in your corner. I don't know if you heard Spike, but they actually said that one of the ways they found out about GDQ was because they kept getting named for everything. <laughs> It's a good name, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going into 3B now, uh, Bramble Scramble. So, like I said, the secret exit actually changes the world map, uh, changes which levels they can go to for the world map. And uh, it's the same number of levels every route, I believe, uh, in this world, but it eliminates a lot of that auto-scroller, and Bramble Scramble is a much faster level. Yeah, it ends up being about 10 seconds faster than either of the alternatives, and like you said, it also just cuts off about half of that auto scroller we just saw so it's a very convenient uh very convenient secret exit we get to take we'll take three other secret at six throughout the course of the run for faster level choices bramble scramble is a really cool level because as you can see everything kind of unfurls in front of you uh it just the entire level it seems like it's you know not loaded everything's just springing up out of out of nowhere which is really neat but it's all very consistent, so they do kind of know where every enemy is going to spawn, and they are ready. And it comes down a lot of the time to knowing, all right, I'm going to do a max jump off of this enemy or off of this uh, this flower or whatever, and then I'm going to do a neutral bounce into another neutral bounce into a max jump. You tend to have these patterns down for uh, for levels like these. And whenever we talk about a neutral hop or a neutral bounce, it generally just means that they are landing on an enemy and letting themselves naturally bounce off of it. They're not pressing the A button to jump higher. They're just taking that minimum height that you normally bounce off of the, uh, the enemy. All right, into three boss now. We, we got some monkeys. Yeah, another boss fight. This was one of the instances that was most affected by them fixing the RNG to make it completely consistent. And again, it's, they made it in almost every instance the best RNG possible. The RNG doesn't really kick in until the second phase of this fight. So the way the health works on this boss is that all three of these baboons uh, have three health apiece. As soon as one of them gets to zero health, then you will move on to the next phase. So you're actually going to see us sometimes hit other baboons just to move along the phase to a different spot so we can actually get to killing the other one quickly. Here in the second phase, you're seeing from Goldfish, worst RNG, they would actually stay really high up on the poles, but now they always come down for us and let us just jump on top of their heads and get rid of them instantly. Now that uh, Goldfish is into the third phase here, again, like, you have to hit, you just have to get one monkey down to uh, its lowest shade, and then you can uh, you can take it out, and that'll move you on to the next phase. But Goldfish is into the third phase, and now he has to actually grab a watermelon bomb and toss it at the enemies. Is it a watermelon, or is it just a, a, like a melon? It's a watermelon, Dude, it's right? Kobe. It's a watermelon. It's a watermelon. Dude, it's Kobe Bryant. Yeah, so uh, we call that the Kobe, when you grab it out of midair and throw it at him. Crunch is going for it. Kobe. The second hit is much more mundane. You just jump on his head with a surfboard. You know, that's that's a lot a lot a lot more mundane than making a basketball shot. <laughs> now in this third one, he's going to be rolling off to the right here and just dodging. Oh well, okay. He's gonna roll <laughs> back to the left just so I could be wrong. <laughs> Got him. Uh, do he's gonna get hit intentionally or do uh, dodge it again because he knew I was gonna say that. And, Phil Mickelson. And, and get the Phil Mickelson as he finishes <laughs> off world three. Kobe! Phil Mickelson. There we go. Crunch, you get the Phil Mickelson as well. And spikes into the third phase. I think, yeah, you've already hit him once in the third phase, right? Yeah, this is hit number eight. Second hit. So, yeah, you guys go ahead and focus on. We got over there the other two runners going into World 4 right now. We said there was one other instance where we're going to be using the DK family. Yep, that's right about here. Uh, they're going to be jumping into 4-1. And the main reason to switch to the DK family here, they're going to be using him for the entirety of World 4. That is because... Phil Mickelson? Vinny is much... <laughs> I think we got a men menuing error from Cruncha there. Dude, thank you, Cruncha. Hardest right. thing in the game. <laughs> Uh, so the main reason here is that Diddy is actually the fastest um, the fastest at moving underwater, basically. And so they're going to start out here with solo DK because that's what happens when you switch from Funky to, to the original team. And then they're going to be grabbing uh, Diddy from a barrel under here. This Oh, actually, a little bonk there from uh, Goldfish. Hopefully it won't matter. But basically, the 
barrels that you've been seeing around that have uh, Funky Kong on them, they're actually supposed to be rotating barrels a lot of the time, which are where you pick up your partner Kongs or get health refills for your partner Kongs. Underwater, these barrels rotate twice as slowly as they do out of water. Out of water, it's one second. Underwater, it's two seconds uh, bef before every rotation to the next, um, the next partner Kong. It starts at Diddy, then goes to Dixie, then goes to Cranky. Now, because Diddy is the best in, uh, for underwater and they want to take a lot of damage boost to not have to wait on these, spiking, these spike arms, they're going to need to actually collect Diddy uh, for most of the time underwater, and if they ever miss, mess up too much, they might miss a cycle. So even though they could they make a, a half a second error, it might cause them to miss another cycle, which loses them six seconds overall. Now, in this particular instance, they actually wanted to pick up Dixie at the end because there is a secret exit that has, uh, has to do with a lot of these currents, and Dixie is much faster at moving through the current with her flutter, as opposed to Diddy, who's not really intended to be able to get through the current, but he can just very slowly. Yeah, you end up saving just a couple seconds switching to Dixie instead. So you can see Goldfish is, uh, in the top right is going to be the first one to get through that current and take the secret exit. Taking the secret exit eliminates several levels that we don't have to do, or I, I think one to two levels that we don't have to do, and is also just faster levels, and cuts out part of this level on top of that. So Yeah, this secret exit is absolutely massive. You end up saving like four minutes, because mm -hmm. you're going to do one whole less level in general, cuts off the entire second half of this level, and one of the levels we're going to get, this next one they're going into, is very, very fast, only a minute. And on top of that, this uh, next level, we're also going to be getting another secret exit, so we're going to be leaving that level early as well. So this is 4A, as Spike's making his way, by the way, to the secret exit as well. 4A is a really cool level because you're actually going to see every Kong in the family, except Funky, uh, as <laughs> you can't, I'm sorry, you can't see Is Funky. he a family member? Did we ever canonically confirm that? I don't know, man. Those of course I am. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't know you were right here. <laughs> I love you, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, but the, you actually get to see every Kong here. You start out as Dixie and then switch to Diddy for some swimming, and then you switch to Cranky because his pogo is very useful for bouncing up very high and specifically bouncing off of spiky objects, as you've seen Cruncha and Goldfish both do now. He can still swim underwater as well, but it's obviously the uh, corkscrew that you could see out of like Funky Kong or just uh, solo DK sometimes. But now with uh, Cranky, they're actually going to be coming up on a setup here. They're going to use some bananas and then do a max jump out of the setup. They're going to bounce and take a couple bounces into this secret exit. Very nicely done there. And that will get them to 4B. Cruncha is staying pretty close behind Goldfish, really not letting that lead uh, slip too far away. Spike barely grabbing Cranky on cycle there. Literally the last frame. <laughs> And if he grabbed the wrong con, like you have could, to die. Yeah, I think you can get it's it right. Technically, it's a I've, lot harder. I've never tried. Have you right. ever done it? I've never done it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just gonna like kind of relax more because I don't think I'm moving. So, <laughs> at least not anytime soon. My my boy Crunch has got this though. I'll I'll move eventually. <laughs> He's trying to throw shade to us. He's really throwing shade to you. Yeah, but Crunch <laughs> is really good. I'm actually scared. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> 1v1 Picross me after this. <laughs> yeah, that, that displays skill in Donkey Kong. <laughs> it's Picross. All right, so now they're into 4B. Uh, this is Tropical Keys. Uh, not to be confused with keys as in keys are on, but keys is in the things that unlock things. And uh, I mean, we're at this point, like this is not, like the movement in here is actually kind of technical if you really get into the nitty gritty of it. But for the most part, they're just going through this very long, almost like mini level based thing. Uh, it's very, it's just a room based level here. They got to pick up the right key for the right chest. Uh, I think Spike, you like to call this kind of a Metroidvania almost. Sure, like you go to <laughs> some rooms, it unlocks other rooms. Yeah. Yeah, in the Wii U version, we actually had a way to like go out of bounds and skip all this. It's one of the few things that actually got patched out. So, a little minor thing to note. But with that, we could probably kick it over for some donations at this point, because uh, they're just going to be moving through the rest of these. Unlocking some chests. Okay, we have $100 from Twisty May's Little Passage, who says, Go Cruncher, shout-outs from a former co-worker to you and the rest of the Department of Customer Love. That's $100. I don't know if it's That's cool, that. Cruncher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can clap. Yeah. Clap. Do it up. clap for people who know people. <laughs> we have friends. <laughs> 
We got $25 from The Dude, who says, Hey, Spike, I will donate another 50 if you win, or if you do five push-ups if you lose. <laughs> we'll get that somehow. All right. <laughs> I really can't do a push-up. So. Don't worry, I'll cover you. I need you to, like, drown in this level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you still got crunchy you got to get through. <laughs> you drown as well, buddy. Get the snorkels <laughs> off. <laughs> We got $250 from Skibs, who says, Another year means another week full of great speedruns. Looking forward to the Resident Evil and Silent Hill 2 runs. Good luck to runners, and may the RNG be kind to you. Thank you very much. All right, out of 4B here for two of our runners. Just uh, two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we got four five. More content. It's so unfortunate that it happened in World 1. Right. <laughs> Uh, all right, 4-5 here, though, for uh, for Goldfish and Cruncha. 4-5 is actually a really neat level. It's a pretty difficult one, actually. This is one that they're going to try to switch to Cranky during because, again, that pogo is, like, pretty useful. There it is, the Cranky swap for Goldfish. Ooh, Cruncha might have saved it? I don't know. He was trying to break that wall, but he uh, hovered for just a little bit and lost some speed. Let's see if he's going to be on cycle. No, he's got to wait. So, again, that's what we were talking about with cycles, how they can a half-second mistake can actually end up costing you three seconds in that specific instance because of having to wait on those barrel cycles. Big, now, moment, big moment right here for Goldfish's screen. Yes, he's going to try to bounce up onto here and then make it into this barrel and shoot past all the barrels, and he got it. Really good Very stuff. nice. Not the end of the level, though, for him. All right, Gold, or, uh, Crunch is coming up to the same trick here. And the strong dong into the barrel. End of the level there for Goldfish. I actually couldn't see because I was looking at Crunch's screen if you got the... Uh, the crate skipper not, but I'm just going to assume you did. Yeah, yeah, th yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so if you look at Crunch's screen, he's going to jump over the crates here and just hover right into the barrel underneath instead of having to slap through him. It saves just a little bit of time, but it saves like an hour in our hearts. It's it, You don't want to slap the crates, man. It's, it's real bad. All right, Spike now coming up to the strong dong, and there it is. Gets all the way into the barrel, not having to deal at all with the rotating um, barrel arms. Now, they do pick up uh, Diddy again because, as you can see, Goldfish is in another water level. See, that's why Spike was behind. He just wanted to demonstrate right here why you pick up Diddy. And now let's see if he can get the crate skip. And there it is. Very nice. Nice job from all three runners. Yeah, if you hover there a little bit too late, obviously you're going to fall in the pit and die. If you hover there a little too early, then you're going to scrape up against the boxes, and you're just going to lose all momentum, and then you die. <laughs> Very cycle-based level that we're going into right here, or that they're halfway through, current capers. Um, again, just trying to get those ditty cycles on the barrels. Again, they're going to be moving at two-second rotations underwater and one second above water, trying to keep his health as full as they can to damage boost and swim correctly through all of this. There's a lot of nuance to just correctly jetpack boosting with Diddy underwater. Yeah, it's as someone who has tried to learn this game before, like it's a lot harder than it looks. There's a lot of buffering because there's the jetpack kind of startup animation. Thanks for the demonstration there, Goldfish. And uh, basically, if you really want to just maximize your uh, your jetpack boosting, it's a lot more precise than just mash this button or hold this button over and over. There's a lot of times where you'll see them just pull out like very small corkscrews, especially after taking damage, or when they just need to go a very short distance instead of starting up an entire new jetpack boost. A lot of damage boost in this level, uh, very much utilizing the extra hearts that were given in funky mode on the Switch version. Very nice level so far for Goldfish and Cruncha. I believe, yeah, Cruncha should be able to get to the end here with no issues. They're both trying to make sure that they made that Diddy cycle on that uh, next, on that second barrel in the level. Yeah, you do not want to lose Diddy at the end. Like, I've got my cycle coming here. I might still be able to catch it based on my movement in the level. We'll see. Yes, sir. If not, I'm going to try to do a damage list route through it. <laughs> uh, um, if you haven't noticed yet, and I'm gl I, I love that they're not going to be able to see this, please take a look at the nameplate below Spike's screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice job, whoever's on stream tech. That was great. All right, we're into Fugu. <laughs> so, 
So Goldfish is into four boss here. This is a super cool boss. This is, I believe, the fastest one and also just one of the ones that cut out the most amount of time from it. And uh, basically with Cranky's cane, you actually get this attack underwater where you could swing his cane. And be, you can actually hit um, Fugu with that. However, Goldfish is having some trouble here. He's actually taking some extra damage, and now he's letting Fugu move around. You really don't want to see him move around while he's vulnerable at all. If you look at Crunch's screen, he's doing it correctly. And uh, he's swinging his cane at Fugu. Fugu drops something every oh, time you hit him. And oh, we're getting we're the ultra it. fat, dude. All right, you never want to see this. Oh, this Hobbs, you're going to have to move. <laughs> Uh, I'm, oh, I You're do! Moving. I get to move! Crutch is in the lead! <laughs> Spike's doing a pretty good job of this boss as well. Uh, taking damage on this boss is actually okay. You just don't want to lose your partner Kong too much. Oh, he's he's not doing too well. Never mind. He had a no, 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 no. I'm doing well. Oh, okay. This, this is my strat. I'm just... Oh, man. Goldfish. Oh, no. Now, he's down to two hearts at this point. He is going okay, to hope this. that there's no more uh -huh. issues. There are a lot of, as you can see, these spike, you know, enemies are moving from off screen. And he can hit the boss with I this him. balloon, but unfortunately. Oh, no, not quite. Okay, you ready? Here we go. All right, one more hit. And what? Spike's taking second place now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you got this. This is like one of the biggest mistakes you can make, basically, is what happened to, to Goldfish, unfortunately. And you now. This. You got this. Uh. You got this. You got this. He oh, gets got the him. shot. It's all for PCF, man. Yeah, all it's PCF. all for PCF. <laughs> yeah. All, all right, right, Frenchie, it's your turn. I think we're, we owe like $5,000 if I win this. So. <laughs> all right, we're, we're into World 5 now. 5-1, uh, very neat level as well. We're back to Funky Kong. And there are some really cool tricks in this level, utilizing that double jump and also with grab jumps in, uh, in particular. Because once again, if they grab yeah. while jumping with Funky specifically, uh, then you can actually get some extra height out of your jump. Now you're gonna see them just completely skip most of this uh, this trolley with the double jump. Cruncha also did a uh, a neat trick that I didn't really get to explain, so we'll get to see the replay on Spike's screen shortly. Oh, you think I'm gonna get it? I don't know. Maybe. I don't either. <laughs> Crunch is moving to the end of the level. Actually, take a look at his screen on the bottom because he's going to be trying to skip all the way into this. Barrel. Okay, he's going to get it. Yeah, that's, we're good. He skipped one of the barrels. It worked out okay. Not too bad. He did, uh, unfortunately, bonk the wall there for a little bit. Now, take a look at Spike's screen. He's just activating that platform and then moving off it as quickly as he can. Not quite going to get the full bounce, but he did manage to get onto that platform just barely. And he's able to land onto the trolley. Wasn't perfect, but he still got there eventually. And I believe that's his motto. <laughs> good enough. <laughs> Anyone else in here a B student in school? All right, let's look at Goldfish's screen. <laughs> and he bounced all the way onto the trolley, so that was looking pretty good. We used to call this the trusty trolley, but we don't have to trust it anymore with Funky Kong, so you could just completely jump off of it as soon as, uh, as, soon as possible. Spike completely skipping the barrels. That's how it's supposed to look. Nice job. That's difficult. Clap. <laughs> None of you get it. <laughs> you don't understand. All right, let's look at Goldfish. He's going to try to dip under this barrel as well, and he gets it as All well. Right. Nicely done. Do you people realize how hard it is to play a video game? <laughs> it's I'm like, you know what's really cool? <laughs> what's that? I'm going to get to pass you again. <laughs> Why? Oh. oh, that's not funny. <laughs> All right, Crunch is really. <laughs> Cruncher here is in an auto scroll. Actually, they're all in an auto scroll now, 5 2. Uh, rocket barrel levels. We never even really explained the mechanic here. It's hold A to move up and don't hold A to move down, and that's really all there is to it. And, uh, and with that, I think we can go ahead and kick it over for some more donations. Please join in for this next one. We have $200 <laughs> from Vrinstar. Yes. So they're finally here. Yes. Performing for you if you know the words. You can join, join in too. Put your hands together if you, you want, want to clap, clap as we take you through this monkey rap. Hood DK, Donkey Kong, he's the leader of the bunch. You know him well. He's finally back to kick some tail. His coconut gun can fire in spurt. If he shoots, yeah, it's gonna hurt. He's bigger, faster, and stronger too. He's the first member of the DK crew. Huh. DK, Donkey Kong, 
And that's as far as I got. Yeah! I don't. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't. I don't actually know the rhythm to it. I had to Google it you during the last it. Day. You yeah, you Jesus, that anything. That was really good. That was really good. I was going to say, I would like to imagine that you were just sitting over there, like, watching a YouTube video. I the was! <laughs> don't I don't know the rhythm! That is one dedicated host, ladies My and gentlemen. My gosh. Someone put $200 in for it, man. I had to. <laughs> All right, $200 per verse. Oh, I'm crying, man. That was so good. <laughs> Thank you. We have $180 from Kuro Makai who says, Hey, Spike Vegeta. Hey. Despite the rough start and all the jokes at your expense, you keep an awesome attitude. In your honor, here's $10 for each joke at your expense. The winner is you. <laughs> Thank you. Now I have an excuse to read more of them. <laughs> On that note, $25 from Heckin' Sleepy, who says, I can't tell if Spike is doing poorly or if the other two runners are just playing that well. Either way, good luck to all the runners. <laughs> that was an old donation. I Ooh. know, it's awful. <laughs> uh, oh, man. They had to dig that one up from four minutes ago. Ooh. So one of them is out of the auto-scroller. Like, we got most of the DK rap in during the entire auto-scroller. That was like 20% of it. Yeah. What are you talking about? Most of it. Anyways. <laughs> Now into uh, Fruity Factory, which I finally called by the right name for one. <laughs> this is a level with conveyor belts, and if you've ever seen a speedrun of any game that has conveyor belts in it, you know that ones that move to the, to the left are bad, and ones that move to the right are good. So they're going to basically try to minimize the amount of time that they're rolling on conveyor belts that are moving to the left, and maximize the amount of time that they're rolling on conveyor belts to the right. Uh, Karnch has done a pretty good job of that so far. This is a pretty, like, it's it's a really neat level because it's just, like, one of those that it just feels good to go through and get everything, right? Like, there's some levels that you can't ex necessarily explain based on just seeing it, but it's just it just feels good. Dude, it's also got an absolute banger of a track. That is true. Shout out to David I, Wise. I can only hear though. your audio, so I only just got to start hearing it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm getting faster. How am I behind <laughs> this guy? <laughs> Nice little bounce off of the uh, plant there for Cruncha in order to kind of bounce up onto the platform and break the crates as quickly as possible. Now a neat little double jump. It's going to get him all the way to the end, except he's got to fall down. Psych! <laughs> and now with uh, with Funky, this section became pretty easy because Funky's got a neat little hover. I mean, it was already pretty easy, but uh, at this point, you could just double jump and hover in place and wait for a platform to spawn beneath you. So nothing too special about it. He's going to try to jump at the, yeah, exactly, as high as possible to get into the barrel while it's still off screen uh, and did a very nice job there. The one nice thing about the hover, the, despite the fact that it kills all your momentum, which I don't remember if we actually mentioned yet or not, but he, Funky Kong has the hover <laughs> and it will kill all of your momentum, so you practically never want to see it. But the one nice thing about it is it can save you if you're able to sit there and wait on a cycle for something. So this is one of the cases where, like, that could potentially show up. Spikes the next one um, in this section, but I really don't expect there to be too many issues. Yeah, just demonstrating the hover there. I like it. I like it. I wanted to keep slap. <laughs> Spike, I'm coming for you, by the way. Oh, please stop. Oh, look, I'm right there. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a horror movie. I'm scared. <laughs> the man with glasses is coming for me. <laughs> When, when's that movie coming out? The Man with, with Glasses. glasses. <laughs> Most mundane movie of the Real summer. Specific. The, the movie poster is just a black background and just glasses with white lit up in them. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can pick up a bowler with relative ease. That's the tagline. Ooh, crunch, crunch is at 5-4, and he actually just unfortunately missed picking up that bomb. Uh, you want to grab bombs as soon as possible because it starts their fuse. Uh, um, it starts moving their fuse faster when you pick them up. And unfortunately, he had to take two passes at that bomb. It's actually more difficult than it looks because you want to start a roll and then grab the bomb right after, like right as you jump, more or less. So that way you can actually get a roll jump um, and have some extra speed and still have the bomb in your hand so you can throw it at the um, at the wall that is being that you need to actually blow up. I don't remember if Spike is actually going to go for that or not. God, no. Okay, so we, we'll see what it looks like when you don't do that. From a casual <laughs> standpoint. And but then if you watch Goldfish. And then shortly after, Goldfish he'll, will pass him. He'll pass me <laughs> with the bomb throw. See, so yeah, you can see Spike does a nice little hop there and then throws the bomb. But if you look at Goldfish's screen top right, you're going to see as this bomb spawns, he's going to roll jump into it and grab it. And that allows him to double jump through the door and keep a lot of that speed. Now, Crunchy just took the secret exit of this level. That is, this. I think this is the secret exit that saves the least amount of time, 
but uh, it really, you'd never want to go to Jamboree, uh, which is the level that you would go to if you didn't take the secret exit. Coming up here, Goldfish and I have a big climb that we have to do to catch cycles up at the top of the platform as well to get to that secret exit. Very easily, you can die here and lose a ton of time. Yeah, we'll look at Spike's screen, the Urban Yeti in the top left here. <laughs> he made a nice job on that climb. Now, this is the kind of the tough part, is making sure that you don't fall in that pit by some means. That was a neat little way of doing it, going through that top route. Crunch just saving himself with a hover for a little bit there. Oh, but only momentarily. Unfortunately, that's going to be a death hit. It's gonna, he is still going to remain in the lead, but he's coming for you. The Urban Yeti is chasing. <laughs> oh, that's what my name is on the thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you he couldn't see it. I'll take it over Spike Vegeta 2. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought they were going to make it. <laughs> it's like, oh, so creative. Ooh. So whoever owns Spike Vegeta on GameStunQuick.com, never take it back. <laughs> So uh, the Crunch is actually, well, all three of them now are in the last level of global cycles that we really care about. And uh, because of Cruncha dying, that really is going to throw off the cycles for him quite a bit. And that's why now you can see him taking a hit here. And he's, oh, barely going to launch onto that platform right before it spawns. Now there is a drop here. He's taking a hit intentionally so he can just make it through the rest of that shaft there. Um, the hit will pause him in the air just for just a moment so that way some crushers beneath him could open up. And now the rest of this, he's really just got to try to get through the barrels as efficiently as he can. Meanwhile, the other two can catch up some time due to that death and also the ensuing global cycle, um, you know, mismatch afterwards. Oh, but unfortunately for Goldfish, he's missing the button trying to save the frames, and that's going to uh, cost him the seconds. And then, yeah, more damage too. Luckily, Funky Kong is a beefy dude. He's got five hearts of health. Again, intentional damage when dropping through the shaft there, so you can get to the bottom. Some really neat cycles can be made in this level, but not, none of them did it. <laughs> Spike with a nice strat, bouncing off the hoots there, took damage, but it still didn't matter. He was able to keep a lot of speed and then double jump into the barrel. Let's see if Goldfish can do it as well. And yeah, it does it even without the damage, very nice. Taking the damage there, you'll, you'll, uh, you're will you absolutely happy to do that. It's just... I want to direct you guys over to Cruncher right now. This level's really, really cool. The first level where we're introducing ice physics. And you got a little taste of it right there, but you can maintain a lot of momentum by actually crouching on ice and then coming out of it immediately into a roll and saving a lot of time. Watch Cruncher's screen. You can see a lot of it. I put pressure on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you really see it from these boost pads. And there's the speed that we like to see. Now, sometimes these flowers can kind of reject you. It didn't happen there, so that's good. Sometimes, though, instead of bouncing you up, they'll just launch you back to the left. And uh, this is where we would have asked Cruncher to turn around and yell, the setup, like he did last time, but you can't do it with Funky Kong. <laughs> the short hop. <laughs> All right, Spike's now having some uh, fancy speed work. So crouch, bingo. There we go. Crouch once again after landing just to avoid getting hit by the spikes that were coming down, the drills. Very nice speed from Goldfish. He actually took a hit, but not too bad because he was able to immediately launch into a roll jump off the it. Rejection. And there's the rejection. That, okay, that was, as much as I love to give fault. you crap for it, that is not his fault. Yeah. This game has roll oscillation. We so think. You, we think. <laughs> just just tell it's the truth. We're trying to help you. Yeah, yeah okay, I got it. Um, basically, as you bob up and down, uh, sometimes just that little piece of fruit right there, it's like one of the only parts where it actually matters, can interact with you in a weird way and you kind of clip under it and just rejects you and sends you back, which not only ends your roll right there, it takes away all of your momentum. It really sucks. So Crunch is in the polar bear. Uh, this is Bash Master. And I, honestly, Crunch, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of this spot, so if you want to take a death in this one, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I can move over there so I can get in the lead. Uh, that's, such a, that's such a horrible death to ask for, dude. <laughs> this dude's like three minutes. He is in no rush. All right, time to point out the one interesting thing about this fight. The level rotates. Look at the background. Yeah, the entire, the entire time the platform you're on, which is like almost like a fighting game platform or something, is actually just rotating in 3D space so you can see the background change. With that, they're just going to hit this idiot a lot of times. He's going to get more and more purple. Let's see some more donations, please. Or hear them, even. Right, very well, then. We have $50 from Anonymous. 
DKCTF developer here. Always Whoa. love seeing this game run by you guys, and so awesome to see the tech in the new funky mode. Give those snowmats a taste of the banana slammer. Can you add an in-game timer? <laughs> Please. <laughs> How do you feel about raw oscillation? <laughs> We have $25 from Anonymous, who says, don't tell anyone we're watching at work. Go, Cruncher. <laughs> and $50 from Sequoia, who says, so excited to see Tropical Freeze get run this year. I picked up the game because of past GDQ runs, and I'm climbing away up the leaderboards to compete with these pros. Tomorrow's my 30th birthday, and it's such a barrel blast to spend the night hanging out with my wife and watching these runs. Thanks to everyone who's helping to make it happen. Happy early birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, man. Also, you said and as if, like, you thought this boss might almost be over and you could stop reading donations. No, you keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> $50 from Kina Gonslow. It says, here's my first 50, and I will donate another 25 if Spike gets first, second, or third. Thank God. <laughs> what I'm if making I... sure you get fourth, kid. <laughs> oh, no more. You're going to start over? You're going to last two? Let me go get my Switch. <laughs> $25 from Cass, who says, come on, Punchy, another $25 if you read us the DK rap. It's for a good cause, mate. I'm calling you out. I did it. <laughs> Do it again. No. <laughs> but it was really good. There are four more verses. I'm going to peace out right here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I haven't seen this. <laughs> All right, so Crunch is gone. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing now. He's, he's sitting over on the timer. Like, he's just... Sit Wait, what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> All right, we, we, well, yeah, please. I'm sure that's happened before, but not, not from, not to what I've seen. You're not even going to explain it, are you? You're just <laughs> like, no, that's, that's just, that's just going to sit there. Funky can hover for a long time. <laughs> Oh, okay. I just realized what happened here. <laughs> so he just bounced off screen, hovered for a while, and then finally hit the, the water, which sent him back to the stage. Th thanks for leaving me hanging there for a while. <laughs> All right. Well, these other two aren't done yet, so let's keep talking about Crunch. He's got 6-1 now. This is, I believe, the shortest level in the game, except for maybe, uh, uh, maybe for Fugu. Yeah, that Not sounds sure. right, actually. It's probably the, slow or the fastest level. Yeah. So 6-1 six, six is a really neat level, actually. Um, it's a super fun IL, but it's also difficult. You have to start off with, I guess, roll jumps kind of actually made this level a little easier, or grab jumps, that is, not roll jumps, uh, To in order to skip some barrels. And unfortunately, Crunch had going for a really precise shot there and uh, just took the death. He's trying to avoid having to go through this kind of long waiting animation. He's going to go for it again because it saves a lot of time and will maybe try not to do it quite as early this time. There it is. So he got through. He's going to take some damage, but there's no worry because once again, he's got five hearts. The, that damage um, or the extra amount of hearts that they actually add in this game is really nice not only for safety, but because you can use a lot more damage boost to save time. And that'll come up especially in 6-2, the next level. But in the meantime, we've got some momentum preservation and then the Cruncher drop, named after this man right here. And would uh, be weird if it wasn't named good. after him. <laughs> the Cruncher drop, named after <laughs> NK. <laughs> <laughs> can, Another community can, member. <laughs> can someone find a trick so we can name it the Cruncher drop? <laughs> name it the Cruncher something, but it's somebody else who found it. May I interject real quick? Yeah. We have, we have made it over $200,000 for the event right. so Hey! Far. Thank you very much. Thank that you very much to everyone awesome. who's donated so far. That is awesome, everyone. Thank you. Keep it coming. All right. Uh, to take a look now at uh, Spike's screen, he's going to come up to the Cruncher drop. But on Goldfish's screen, he is jumping all the way to the end, basically there. Just rolls slightly off the edge and then jumps straight to the end. Knows he's going to be able to bounce on that enemy. Spike will be coming up to that soon. What happened to you? Where I you? know, I got ahead, right? Yeah. <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, Bashmaster was an issue. <laughs> All right, well, Spike gets the nice roll and then jump as well, straight into the barrel. Very, always a fun one to pull off. And now into 6-2, some very sexy, just long bounce strats here that you can see Cruncher working on. And then as he comes up to the end of it, you're going to see more of it here, just a lot of neutral hops. Uh, unfortunately, takes a bit of damage there. I don't 
think that's going to be a problem, but if he takes too much unintentional damage, it can become a problem because there is a damage boost at the end of this level that will save a lot of time if they can pull it off. So he wants to be able to hit, weave through these enemies right here. Took damage right there, so he's going to have only one health yeah. to work with after this big boost. Bounces past the third hoot so that he can damage boost all the way to the end. That was really only started becoming possible because of the extra um, um, hearts that were in the Switch version, or specifically in oh. Funky mode. So some extra damage, but still made it through the level, so not too bad for Cruncha. We see Goldfish. I keep looking at Spike Screen, but I gotta remember Goldfish is in second now. Goldfish is gonna go for this damage boost as well, and there it is. You just you he just launches super far. <laughs> I think there's this whole like they just realize that you're too far to the right and they don't want to send you all the way back to the beginning of this ship, but there is a, a ship that just has this long emerging process that they completely skip over with that damage boost. Spike taking a hit from the hoots, but he's actually, I think, normally okay with that. <gasps> Unfortunately, oh, oh, can he hover? There it is. He saves himself, and he's going to make it hey. to the platform. Now I just have to survive the rest of the level. Which, nah, yeah, luckily isn't too much. And you're Easy good. for you to say. <laughs> hey, you did it. Crunch is into 6-4 now. There are, by the way, no secret exits that they're going to take in World 6, unless I'm forgetting something. Uh, nah. So there, it's just end barrel for each level. Very easy route to remember. Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned this or not, but kind of the big Easter egg of World 6. Uh, not Easter egg, but the lore of it is each of these worlds, or each of these levels represent a world in Donkey Kong Country Returns. So we got eight levels here and then the boss, so the biggest world of the game, and definitely the most challenging. Now we're gonna see a really neat roll and then grab jump from Crunchy to get all the way to that barrel, just skipping some platforming and another barrel. And then he gets to slide down. It looks like he's in a super cool surf, uh, surfboarder pose as he slides down the uh, the hill. Everything they did about Funky was just to make him look cooler. Like every, every instance of the original DK family not looking super cool, they're like, no, 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 no. Fun Funky's gonna look better than that. See, look at this slide. Beautiful. <laughs> the 6-4 is kind of boring. I'm not going to lie. It's a little bit. <laughs> All right, but we're coming into... Uh <clears throat> or wait, was that that was uh, that was six three six yeah. three? Sorry, I said six That's four. Twice. Right. We're coming into six four. You can correct me. It, I'm okay with it. No, it's, good. it's more fun just seeing how long you'll be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're counting. <laughs> oh man, I always got to get one. I, I finally got, <laughs> I finally got um, world five right, so I had to mess up world six. But now that we're actually in six four, we have another auto scroller. This is the last real auto scroller of the game. There's another level that you have to do a lot of waiting on, but not an auto scroller. And uh, with this auto scroller, I don't, I don't know if anyone's going to try to kind of try hard it and damage themselves down to one. <laughs> don't let me pressure you into doing it, Cruncha. Don't worry. None of us will ever think I'll die. Yeah, nobody's doing it. That's <laughs> I'll <okay>. die. <laughs> nobody's doing it. Not, not a single one. Definitely not the top right screen. <laughs> Gold, Goldfish has to assert dominance in some way, man, if he's going to lose the race. It's the only way I can feel good about myself, man. <laughs> There is a pretty common theme. All right, theme. all right. Oh, okay, we're getting one from Cruncher. Can we get the second? There it is, one heart. But he did that right when he was going oh, to the checkpoint. Oh, man, point. now I got to do it. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so any damage in this last auto-scroller, and they will be sent back pretty far because there's only one checkpoint in the level. Yeah, it's like a two-and-a-half-minute level, so. And no hearts. Yeah, yeah, there's no hearts for them to collect along the auto-scroller. Ooh, that was a little deep swoop there, Cruncher. <laughs> Now, I will say that when it comes to uh, Tropical Freeze races, there is a running theme, which is that somehow Goldfish will always scoop away the victory at the end. So we'll see if that happens this time. Man, you're going to have go ultra fat on Fugu and still win. <laughs> Cruncha, don't let this happen. It's too late for me. Cruncha is just focusing super hard on not dying in this auto scroller. It's great. Okay. I don't blame you. Uh, I at least got to the purple turd. Everyone shouts the big purple turd on my screen. <laughs> Our boy. Freezing deep. All right, with the rest of this, Cruncha is now pretty safe. Yeah, there we go. He's going to be hopping into a barrel, and that's going to give him his heart refresh. And uh, now he's just going to be a snowball for a little bit and roll to the end barrel. I'm sure the other two will be fine, so why don't we kick it over for a couple more donations? Okay. We have $575 from Tails Fox who says, the inner Agent 3 fight hasn't been met yet. 
We've got to fix that. If you haven't seen this fight before, you absolutely need to. Woomies and Vimos to all the AGDQ staff. Also, Spike, this doesn't look like Picross. <laughs> Are we cool if I just load it up? <laughs> if you're still, if they both finish Frederick, you should just start playing Picross. I'm actually down. <laughs> all right. Are all three of them going to make it? Spike's just got this last little corridor to go through. I've been peeing myself for two minutes. <laughs> and he made it. Good job. Woo! I heard, I heard those people clap for Goldfish, too. <laughs> all right, so 6-5 on Crunch's screen. This is the hardest level in the entire game. Yeah. Enjoy. So this is a super cool level, and it's got three main tricks in it, and they all have incredibly creative names, OK? So there's three big boosts in this level. The first one is uh, called the Inca, the Inca Dinka. Dinka. That's yeah. right. That's right. It's called the Inca Dinka, and uh, he's going to basically use the springboard to get a lot of speed as he rolls off the platform. Now he's going to try to carry the speed as far as he possibly can, which is going to be all the way into this rolling wheel. But it's not done yet, because now he's going into the second boost, which is Snow Cedo. He actually goes back to the previous springboard, so that way he can get more speed off of that as well, get a lot of good bouncing. He's going to save himself with a hover, and he's going to get a nice little backup boost, take the damage, grab the vine for some reason. I don't know why you did that. Let's look at Goldfish's screen for a moment. All right, he's, <laughs> he's into the Inca Dinka, and now he's going into the, the uh, Snow Cedo here in just a moment. Gonna get that roll, which somehow, for some reason, like gives you extra speed once you go off of those springboards. Let's see if we can get the full thing here. Off of all of the snowflakes, gonna get an extra roll and all the way into the barrel. Nice job from Goldfish. It's not over, folks, because we have the most creative name of all, the third boost. That's the third one that Cruncher just did and is now into the end barrel, and that was a fantastic level from him. <laughs> The third boost coming up for uh, Goldfish as well. This is maybe the most difficult, and that's why he had to bail on it very quickly. Spike unfortunately died. I didn't see what happened, but I'm not too surprised. Let's keep looking at Goldfish. <laughs> I'm sorry, Spike. I love you, buddy. No, you're good. <laughs> Goldfish make it all the way to the barrel. Spike unfortunately having a little bit of trouble. There you're was, right there? There was no. You wanna, like, wanna swap a little bit? <laughs> not just X <extra> left. <laughs> now you got this. All right, so trying to bounce over here. I don't know. He's going to have to wait on the cycle at this point. And there we go. Now he's made up here. He, Spike's actually going to do a different version of the Snow Cedo. So he's still going for it, but he's going off of a different platform. So he's going to use this platform instead. And now he'll get his roll of speed right in the same position. Or actually, sorry, in the later position. And all the way into the barrel. OK, so good Snow Cedo. Inka Dinka was a little rough, but Snow Cedo was good. And now he'll be coming up to the third boost shortly. These other two are in a different level, but don't worry about it for now. <laughs> Spike's coming up to the, again, again, ever creative third boost. Gets a nice boost off of the first snowflake. Everything's looking good so far. Rolling, jumping. He's into the barrel. A little bit of hovering at the end. <laughs> I want to note, by the way, the third boost is actually called the Inca Dinka, and the first boost is called the first boost, but it was funnier if we swapped it around. <laughs> or that joke. We just wanted to do the creative boost name jokes. <laughs> Rule of threes, people. Oh, it, I died. Uh, oh, yeah, Cruncha fell off the screen and died, and then suddenly miraculously survived somehow. For whatever reason, the <laughs> barrel, you guys are watching up here on Goldfish screen a little bit. Yeah, so the cool thing about this level is that all the triggers are kind of based on which platform you land on. So because of Funky's double jump and especially the grab jumps too, they can land on platforms very early. But yeah, Goldfish just held right and walked off seemingly into an avalanche, but instead he fell into a barrel that was hidden and was eventually going to reveal itself. And uh, he just has a visual cue on when he can launch himself from that barrel. We'll, Spike, we'll, we'll see that soon. <laughs> it's it's going to be a little bit. All right, into six, seven now. This is the uh, this level is very kind of laboratory themed. I know Spike you always like to call it the Crash Bandicoot level. Uh, it just reminds me of the lab levels from Crash One, and uh, you can actually jump into this barrel that Crunch is about to get into very early. So take a look. He's going to get onto the second platform as it's revealing itself, and then he's going to jump right into this barrel off screen and uh, save a little bit of time there. And he's going to slap the gong three times, pick up the puzzle piece because he's definitely going for swag. And now uh, moving on to the rest of the level. This is a level in which we're going to utilize every single extra heart that they have. So if they make a mistake at the very end, they will be at one health, and so they can't afford the extra hit. 
So there's the first one. Just not having to wait on the electricity allows them to move a lot quicker through the level. We taking up are taking our second one here soon. Right there. I think he had to hold up just a little bit. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. I was trying not to take the damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> Continue to move through the level. Goldfish doing pretty well here as well. There's the third damage boost for Cruncha. Skipping over those last few lasers. And the fourth one as it gets to the end. So once again, if they take any unintentional damage early on, it can be a rough time. Because then they suddenly have to change up all their strats. Goldfish has had a pretty solid level so far, so he's just got to go through the barrel. Oh, he's going to skip the barrel, go off the end, and actually hit the barrel off screen. Very nicely done. Yeah, that was a jump that was not possible before we found the grab jumps. Do you like how I said you were going to utilize all your damage just to, like, save you, Cruncher, make you look better? <laughs> <laughs> utilize all the extra hearts. I saw it coming. It was fine. I totally didn't just get it wrong. All right, we got two of them into 6-8, Spike's into 6-7, one level behind. And uh, we'll see. keep an eye on Spike's screen, too, because it's probably the more interesting of the levels here. But 6-8, to talk about it real quick, is another Rambi level, our very last level besides the final boss as well. And uh, the theme with this level is that they really like to make you wait on it. There have been a lot of discoveries to kind of try to avoid some of the waiting, like what Crunch just did there. We was able to go under the platform. Again, the double jump from Funky is super helpful here, especially the fact that he can pull that entire Rhino up as well with him. Spike now is going to be taking his first damage boost here. Every time you take damage, you got to remember that you have to, like, wait that extra moment to start up your next roll, as well as, like, if you're in an infinite roll, it will reset that for you. I believe you took an unintentional hit there, so he's going to have to make sure he doesn't take damage in that next position. Yeah, made it for it in the next spot. So now he should be good for the rest of this level, because once again, local cycles are camera-based cycles in this level, so he doesn't have to worry about some global cycle being off. Oh, takes a hit from the Hoots, though. Oh, and he could have made it through with the iframes, but unfortunately, he took another hit. So now you got to be real careful at the end, and the hover into the Hoots is unfortunately going to uh, be his demise. Had a couple instances of attachment there. You want to explain what attachment is real quick? Sure. The other two are in 6-8. I mean, what am I going to talk about there? Yeah, right. <laughs> attachment is just something where... God, it just keeps doing it. Where you, uh, you get caught on a platform, more or less, because it kind of, like, like sort of you. sucks you in, yeah. yeah. And the off-screen barrel hit for Spike. Very neat as well. <clears throat> Crunch have made it past the AGDQ barrel at AGDQ, by the way. We call it that because the first time this game was shown, uh, Goldfish just mashed A instinctively and died because you're supposed to wait on that barrel. We'll see if he does it again. He waited this Rambi. time, everybody. Hey. He did it. <laughs> And crunch a ditching Rambi. Now, will Goldfish ditch Rambi? That's the real question. Is it really a question? No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like to ditch Rambi here, not so much because it's like super time saving, but because Rambi's just not. Yeah, I think it wastes time. R Rambi's just not good. Not, not great. <laughs> yeah, he's worth wasting time for. Because remember, you don't want to save the animals, you want to kill the animals. All right, final boss here for Cruncha. Goldfish isn't too far behind at all. Spike will get there soon. <laughs> Define soon. <laughs> well, there was a trademark behind that soon. You just didn't see it. Oh, OK. Now, uh, Frederick here, our final boss. Once again, RNG has been basically fixed in this game. There used to be some of they had to worry about. But the gimmick of this boss is that he's got a foreground and a background, unfortunately. <laughs> The uh, Cruncha wasn't quite able to hit him with the first two enemies there. He was able to hit him with the third one. So in each of these phases, he's going to launch three enemies. You pick, you uh, grab them, and you just need to hit him once with them. Now you need to hit him three times. And in this first phase, uh, Frederick's going to move pretty slowly. So all three hits aren't too bad. Now in the next phase, he's going to increase his speed with each hit. So it becomes much more difficult. But before that, he's going to hop around some platforms. And it's based on which platform you're standing on. I believe his jump distance doesn't actually matter in terms of, like, speed. Uh, it, he just has a set amount of time it takes him to jump from platform to platform. Now that he's dropping these ice dragon things, 
the uh, the ground is all slippery and they gotta deal with ice physics. Cruncha, ever fan of old music, is loving the whole like knee shuffle dance thing. I can't do it or I would try to demonstrate it for you. If you just move the analog stick back and forth really quickly, you can get them to do it. It's great. There we go, Goldfish is doing it too. Remember to always swag out in the final boss, everybody. All right, Cruncha going for his uh, fourth hit now. And remember, each of these will speed up. So now fifth hit, and on the sixth hit is when he's going to be fastest. There we go. And Frederick, you really kind of have to like hit him on the shoulder blades. You can't hit him on his horn, uh, his like helmet, when you can't really hit him on the butt either. You, it's really a smaller hitbox than it looks. There's the piss your pa pants RNG, but it's not RNG anymore. And really utilizing the power of the hover here. <laughs> Floating all the way down. <laughs> I love this, the extra spinning based on the grabs. Spikes now made it into the final boss. All right, Crunch has only got three hits to go. So he's going to try to hit Frederick early with one of these, uh, these enemies if he sees the opportunity. Unfortunately, misses that first one. Now he's going to wait for Frederick to stop moving and then throw the enemy. So now three more hits, and we're coming up soon on time for Crunch. It won't be on the last hit here, but it will be on the slap after the boss. So here we go. That's number seven. Number eight. Number nine. And time. All right, Goldfish not far behind. I believe these are his last three hits as well. Got number nine. And time for Goldfish. And I'm going to shift over here. <laughs> oh, you all the action <laughs> right here. It's all you, buddy. It's Thank all you. you. Let's go, Spike. <laughs> if I miss a hit, I'm going to play Pacross. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like the other. <laughs> Do you have Pacross on yours? Are you trying to. I want to buy a figurine before he finishes. <laughs> Throw, 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 throw. <laughs> You're going to be cheering for like two more minutes, so just calm down. I think Crutch is also going to try to buy a figurine now. Uh, that was a bear switch home screen, by the way. You got to get some more games. I had Fortnite on the floor. Not right? you, him. <laughs> also, you should be ashamed of yourself. All, all I have time right. for is Donkey Kong. <laughs> All right, Spike and is now into the third phase, I think. <laughs> yeah, we just finished okay. phase two. Right, I know good. we've been here for a while. <laughs> I've bought this game three times, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are these the last three video games you've bought? Is Tropical Freeze, Tropical Freeze, <laughs> and Donkey Kong Country Tropical? Uh, not quite, but it might be close. <laughs> he rebought Shining Force 2 in the and middle Goldfish of the Goldfish <laughs> gets the, uh, the Penguin I'm going to get, like, Diddy. You don't have You're not going to buy get this. Are you kidding me? Oh, we're going to have to move on to Jack 3. <laughs> and the Papa Penguin for Cruncha. Ooh, nice penguins. Not the bad. duo, not bad. two quick ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, by the way. <laughs> All right, hit number seven. Number eight. Number nine, the and the flaps, Urban the Yeti takes it home with a bunch of slaps. Hey! And time. GG, boys. GG's. GG's. GG. Congratulations once again to Cruncha for the victory. Goldfish, second place, and uh, Spike bringing up the rear, <laughs> trying to load Pacross as fast as Do you can. Do you want me to buy a figurine? <laughs> yeah, buy me. This one's on her. This for one's me. yours? Okay, here we go. Here's hey. a hoo. I got an owl. I was I really hoping it was going to be a I'm, repeat. I missed a lot of those. <laughs> All right, we're going to shut up now because you can hear these folks in an interview pretty soon right after this. So. Oh, we probably need to go. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, and uh, thanks again, everybody, for an awesome race. Thank you very much to the runners for that great race of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And that's also it from me from now. I am tagging out hosting. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the show.
All right, hello everybody. And Eternal Enigma here to take, out, take you with you through these next three runs. Uh, we are gonna take a quick ad break here and we'll be right back with the Donkey Kong Country interview with the participants from the last race, but we're gonna play some ads and we'll be right back. Got a cool design you want to have printed on a tee? Bring it over to TheYeti.com. We have a bunch of colored tees to choose from. We'll review your design, and if yours gets accepted, we'll schedule a sale date. Your design will be available for 24 hours only, and you'll get $150 per shirt sold and three free shirts on us. After that, you'll still keep the rights to your work. Neat, huh? Visit TheYeti.com forward slash submit today. Gris is a serene and evocative journey presented through stunning art and animation and a breathtaking soundtrack. Available now on Nintendo Switch and PC. Visit grisgame.com for more about Gris and developer Nomada Studio. You can also reach them at Twitter at Nomada Studio BCN. From PCs to arcades to consoles old and new, World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video gaming experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. With our dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expansive collection of games and consoles, World 9 is ready to take your event to the next level. For information on booking and upcoming events, check world9gaming.com. All right, we are still getting this interview getting set up here with all the participants from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I'm an Eternal Enigma. I'll be with you for these next three runs. Coming up next, we have the Rixer with Jack 3. Going to be any percent, no out of bounds on the PS2. And uh, looks like, happy to say, the glitch exhibition incentive has been met. So congratulations on that one. Going to go over a few donations here while we're getting this interview still set up here. We have a $50 donation from Marius222, says, Sadly, I was unable to attend this week due to the events selling out. I'll be donating what I would have spent this week as the week goes on. This is for my grandma dealing with cancer. Thank you for everything that you do. Money goes to Vegeta's Choice. We have a $60 donation from Dr. Duncan Pettengill, says this is my first GDQ event after finishing up my PhD and getting a real job. 
Thankfully, that means I can donate more to this amazing cause. Stay funky, runners. $20 from CMM1215 says, Hi all, sitting in the audience, watching now. Very happy to be here to support you and cheer you on. Best of luck and hoping you're all having a fantastic GDQ. We have a $33.75 donation from Jax58. Says, here's $20 plus 25 cents for every time I swore while playing Tropical Freeze at my parents' house over the holidays. Sorry, Mom. We have a $100 donation from Skull Marin. Right on. Says, always nice to watch the event. Watching for multiple years now. Money goes to Spike's Choice. Hype! We have a $100 donation from Schlazer. Says, gotta go fast. We have an anonymous... $250 donation. No message. Thank you, Anonymous. No message, no problem. Thank you very much. We have a $300 donation from Ali121. Again, no message, no problem. Thank you. Stop me if you've heard this one before. We have a $100 anonymous donation. No message. Thank you. Also, a $100 anonymous donation. Thank you very much. We have a $50 donation from Willie the Hawk. Says, I'm glad I get to finally donate to AGDQ. I've been watching for the past couple of years and you guys are great and doing great things. My mom got diagnosed with leukemia last year and it's been tough, but we are strong and only getting stronger. And knowing you guys are here fighting with us makes me really appreciate what you guys do. Keep on running and keep it fast and quick. Love you guys. All right, and I'm getting word that we're ready for that Donkey Kong Country interview with Jay Hobbs, and we're going to throw it on over. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Welcome back uh, to the interview area here. I am joined by, as I affectionately like to call them, the three idiots. <laughs> and we've got uh, Cruncha, we've got Michael Goldfish, and we have the Urban Yeti himself, Spike Vegeta over here. I like to believe that that's what it says underneath his name, even though I can't read it. <laughs> it's my third different name I've had this week. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I mean, we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about that race. And uh, that was a fun one. That was a, probably not what any of us really expected to happen. Much more lead changes than we were expecting, especially later in the run. Mm -hmm. um, so just going into it, give me your impression. What did you guys really think was kind of going to happen in the race and stuff? Like maybe some World 1 lead changes or World 2 or something? Well, personally... Oh, I stole your mic, sorry. No, you go. Um, well, personally, I feel like I make most of my mistakes, like, early on in all our practice races. It would be like I'm doing World 1, 1-1, one, one, oops, I screwed something up, Crunch has the lead, and then it's me fighting back for it and, like, hopefully getting it at the end. But this time, I had to actually try to hold the lead the whole time, and then, oops, World 4, huge beef that <laughs> couldn't get it back. <laughs> Yeah, I was super impressed with Cruncha how well you played all the way throughout it because I kept thinking like, okay, somewhere in here. And you had a couple of deaths, but they were very minor and you actually like kept your cool and played really well. I always said from the beginning, I thought Cruncha was the wild card. Mm -hmm. If I had to make a prediction, I thought Goldfish is going to win, I'm going to come in third, and Cruncha's the like 
<laughs> like, potentially I could have come in second because Cruncher could have been anywhere from like a 122 to a 126 on the scale. <laughs> He'll tell you himself right there. So his runs are all over the place. So it was really cool to see you get to keep that lead, nailed your 6-5 and everything else there at the end. Ish. Ish. <laughs> Cruncher, what do you think about the, uh, the race to take it home the victory? Yeah, it was, I was definitely very nervous going into it. And... Uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we had like a tournament for fun uh, <laughs> a while back, and uh, I think Goldfish went undefeated in that tournament. And, oh, wow. Yeah, a little and, uh, bit. <laughs> last couple of finals races, I think he beat my PB both times. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or at, yeah, at least got pretty close to it, so. But not um, on the big stage. <laughs> not in the joint. I couldn't, I yeah, couldn't so clutch I, it out this time, I, man. I figured it was going to take some kind of Black Swan event, and that <laughs> event was Fugu. So. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think anything, it had anything to do with the sunglasses? Because, I mean, we got to talk about this. I mean, yeah, You're totally. It was the sunglasses. It was the jorts. It uh, had nothing to do with me. I always play perfectly, you know. <laughs> well, uh, let's let's go ahead and actually get into a social media question that's pretty uh, tangentially related, which is from at Digital Tie. Uh, how can I be as funky as Michael Goldfish? Well, you start by buying an undershirt from Walmart. <laughs> And then you live your best life possible. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it is colder in this room than you all think it I is. am freezing, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> uh, life tips for Michael Goldfish. All right. Uh, let's I actually want to, at this point, let's roll into our first clip, because you guys mentioned the Fugu thing. And uh, we actually have a clip of the Fugu lead change here. So let's take a look at that one. Now, what happened? <laughs> so yeah, as you can see here, uh, on the top right is Goldfish, bottom is Crunch, and top left is Spikes. So Spikes entering the level now, and Goldfish gets an ultra fat Fugu right up here, and Cruncha is just like swinging through like a madman, finishing off the boss and taking that lead. I've always thought Cruncha was one of the strongest Fugu fighters, mm -hmm. like out of the. <laughs> that was almost a band's name. Um, <laughs> Fugu fighters uh, out of our community, really, really consistent, because there's a lot to that more so than just hitting me in the back. There's very specific positioning you got to do right there. Uh, we kind of saw it afterwards. I'll be interested to go back and look at the full thing, kind of see what happened to you. That, like, that was, we like, just four. not talk about it. You just, you just don't let that happen. What's happening right there where he's bouncing around? Not that. If he goes ultra fat, it's a problem. Yeah, it's already over. But Crunchy, you used to have uh, IL record on the Wii U version, right? Yeah. You did something kind of special in that IL record, didn't you? Um, yeah, I, th I think I, I came up. I had the first uh, 37 uh, on Fugu by uh, going around him for the, the sixth hit and like knocking him back into place, which is like the main uh, place where uh, people were losing time. You know that's I, not something say. special I was asking about. Okay. Hobbs is talking what? about the cutscene that you watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I got world record, and I... Uh, so if you get a, um, a world record or like any time in an uh, individual level time, uh, if you watch the cutscene first, then you have to... Like everybody who watches your time after that has to watch the entire cutscene too. They can't skip it. They have to watch as much of the cutscene as you watch. So for all of our research to learn what you did, <laughs> we had to go through an extra 40 seconds every time to analyze each movement. <laughs> I'm still mad at you. <laughs> That's so good. We gotta see if you bring that back to the Switch version, man. Because yeah. this game actually does have in-game uh, IL leaderboards and, and yeah, one plays. Of, yeah, Great. one of the strongest I think I've ever seen among all games. Like it's a, a really useful tool. Like I don't know, Goldfish. What would you say if someone wanted to like get into speedrunning this game? Like, oh, you just do the time attacks, 100. Mm -hmm. percent Yeah, Especially you just boot the up the game, like mm -hmm. beat the level. It unlocks the time attack, and then just do it. Try to get yeah. the shiny golds. Try to get the time attack records mm -hmm. for all of them. You can see the leaderboards. You can copy all the good people. But yeah, time attacks, it's all in game. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's super. It's a super fun game, by the way. Like so, absolutely learn it, and you can learn it in small chunks with the ILs. But except, don't beat me in two one. Then I'll be mad. <laughs> right. I still want to put time into it. <laughs> all right, let's get into another social media question. Uh, this one from at J Gelvar. Can you ask the runners who's their favorite Kong? So let's go down the line, Cruncher. We'll start with you. Uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to Ghoul and say uh, Dixie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Cranky and Funky are obviously both very popular for, as far as speed goes. And, uh, uh, unfortunately, Dixie uh, gets kind of obsoleted by Funky Kong in this run. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Donkey Kong Country 2 is definitely one of my favorite games still. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Good choice. Well, personally, Dixie's definitely top two, and it feels like cheating if I say Funky Kong. <laughs> like a little bias there. But I personally think Swanky Kong is underrated and deserves to make a comeback. <laughs> Swanky Kong. What, what, what game is Swanky Kong from? DKC2. Okay. Yeah, he does the bonuses, and he asks, like, little questions. I didn't know the last man. <laughs> 
DPK, right, get out of here. Uh, hey, blame him. All right, I don't know why, but just <laughs> try to <laughs> try to find DK's a way to do it. Two, three for three, dude. It's <laughs> like my boy Chunky Kong. He can pick up boulders with relative ease. <laughs> my boy, my spirit Kong, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so to ask another question about the race, because we do have another clip prepared. We're going to roll into this next one. This is actually 6-5, and it kind of ties in to another social media question, so we'll like bring that up in a moment. But uh, basically, this is 6-5. You can see the boosts here, and uh, specifically in the top right, you're seeing Goldfish nail the snow Snowsido, which is the uh, kind of biggest boost. Is it the biggest boost in this level? I, I guess it is, right? Uh, what, how much practice just goes into this level and these three boosts in particular and how, kind of how difficult are they? A whole bunch. <laughs> a whole bunch <laughs> and lots. It's pretty much just grinding the time attack over and over and over and over again. Right. And you're just dying like maybe hundreds of times before you can really get it consistently. Because like I was able to pull off the whole big first section that's in the clip here, but that took so much practice, mm. like hours and hours and hours. Mm. Like, it can't really be understated. Probably as much as the hardest trick that was in the, uh, the Wii U version, the Dozy Do with the tornadoes. Right. And Crunch, I remember you hovering into the barrel at the end of the level. So how many times did you watch my IL time for that <laughs> for 6-5 <six>, to get <laughs> that strat down? You know? I didn't watch the cutscene at the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the 6-5 cutscene. <laughs> but in all yeah. seriousness, actually, like, what, what happened um, at, so the, I believe it was your first boost went fine, uh -huh. uh, and your snow Cedo went a little wonky, yeah, but it, it, it kind went, of back it up, so what? It went a bit awry. I got a better, I got really good speed, actually, better speed than I expected to, and that <laughs> caused me to actually overshoot one of the snowflakes, and, uh, yeah, I ended up having to, like, grab the vine, because I panicked, and I turned back, and, yeah, and went slow. <laughs> all right. But again, uh, you saved it. Nice miracle. <laughs> And uh, I did want to ask real quick, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this one just to, to Spike, our last social media question, at Amaryllis Misaki, which is, what's the hardest skip to pull off in this game? And uh, I'm curious if it's 6-5 or if it's something else for, for uh, you, Spike. I, I think you definitely got to go with 6-5. It's the crown jewel. It's the toughest part of the run. Technically, there is a completely optimal route you can go for where the do -si do we talked about in World 3 where you use the tornadoes pulling around, you can save time by like five seconds if you do all of that perfectly. So maybe that would be something as okay, well. Which but, boost yeah. in 6-5? In, uh, which one in 6-5? Yeah. I just started lo learning that second boost from DKS, world record holder of this game, a couple weeks ago. But I think all three of them are like equally difficult. You're, you're going to sink... Like I said, so many more hours into that level than any other one. So uh, I, I genuinely would say, like, it's a tie between all three of them. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Uh, and thanks for having me on the couch to commentate. Yeah, so, thank you. That was thank you blast. very much. Congratulations yeah, once again to, again to Cruncha. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Our dude. <laughs> so Cruncha, Goldfish, and Spike, and I will all say thank you for watching and throw it over to the Rixer, who's going to be running Jack 3. Ooh. Very soon. That is correct. We got Jack 3 coming up by the Rixer. Coming up. All right, we are ready to go. So here is the Rixer.